Turning to Dika, Dark Lines told her that when she attacks monsters, she needs to attack promptly and learn their weaknesses. He said that she can't just spam attacks aimlessly because it would be a waste of time and energy. Fixing her hat, Dark Lines told her that she had done well on her own, though, and he would give her 7 points for that. Dika modestly replied that she understood and would keep his instructions in mind. She said that she will try to control her emotions better next time. On the dialog box in front of Ling C, the information about the level and post-promotion subclass Dark Lines was hidden. The protagonist thought about the fact that he had actually gotten here before him. He wondered who this girl beside him was because he didn't remember such a person from his past life at all. Pressing his lips together, Ling Si thought about why she was here in this life. He moved his foot in dark lines, noticing the sound, turned around. With a sweep of his sword, he broke the stone pillar into pieces with yellow energy. The protagonist, as he landed, noted his incredible attack speed and thought to himself that, if not for top time, it would have turned out to be a direct hit. Dark Lines, finding himself behind Ling Xi's back, said with a smile that he thought it was the Dream Eater they had missed. He asked why he was sneaking around and said that he almost hit him by mistake. The protagonist froze in amazement. He turned around, and Dark Lines said he remembered him. Recalling their past duel, he asked about being the thief from back then. Dika, standing between the stone pillars, asked if it was his friend. Looking at Dika who was shyly peeking out from behind a stone column, Ling Xi thought about the fact that her bloodlust from earlier is gone. Dark Lines, folding his arms across his chest, replied with a smile that he wasn't really his friend and was a thief with whom his paths had crossed a long time ago. He said that if he remembered correctly, his name was Ling Si. Smiling broadly, Dark Lines said that he had heard a lot about him lately, and it seemed that his reaction speed had increased noticeably since their last encounter. He said that he's not bad at all. The protagonist grudgingly replied that they hadn't seen each other in a while. Dark Lines said that he remembered that he was one of the candidates for the Badge of the Glorious. He told Dika that he is just like her. Dika opened her eyes in surprise. After a moment, her face turned completely white and she smiled mysteriously. Lang Si asked in surprise that she was a candidate for the Badge of the Glorious. The Badge of the Glorious appeared in Dika's hand, and she said that she received a system alert that one of the three candidates had been defeated. She said that thus, that left the two of them. Surrounded by a red aura, she asked Ling Si to fight her. Frowning, Ling Si thought in surprise that her bloodlust was back. Dark Lines, chuckling slightly, said that Dika had always been a hothead and Ling Si could ignore her. The protagonist thought about her following Dark Lines and calling him master, and whether that meant they were master and disciple. Dark Lines told him about how if he let her humble appearance fool him, he would pay dearly. He said with a serious look that Poinkadika has two personalities, and the moment she enters the battle, the humble Poinkadika becomes the cruel and cold-blooded inner Dika. Dika stood in front of the protagonist, surrounded by a dark red aura. She abruptly rushed forward and swung her leg upwards when she was next to Ling Si. Ling Si managed to jump aside, and the impact of Dika's foot smashed the stone floor of the cave with force. Her bandaged arm was enveloped in red energy. Swinging her fist, Dika used fist technique, force of nature. The protagonist dodged again, managing to jump aside, and the impact of the girl's fist shattered a stone pillar. Ling Si thought in surprise that this was to be expected from a dark lion's disciple, and her one punch contained such terrifying power. Dika told him to stop dodging. She told him to either resign voluntarily, or fight her properly. She struck with her fist, and a whirlwind of red energy shattered the stone pillar next to Ling Si. The protagonist touched the ground with his hand, jumping aside. His dagger hand was enveloped in electricity, and he frowned, thinking that this was a very random fight. Using top time, Ling Si abruptly shortened the distance between them while swinging his dagger. Dika, noticing top time, said with a smirk that two people could play this game. Using top time, she started parrying the main character's blows with her fists. Dark Lines told Ling Si not to even think about underestimating Dika. He said that he'll have him know that she has an awakening rate of 96%. Standing motionless not far from them, he talked about how the two of them should just use the power of Badge of the Glorious and he would really like to see it. Dika told him to shut up, calling him an old man. She said she doesn't need the power of the Badge of the Glorious to deal with someone like him. Dark Line said in her Dika doesn't give proper respect even to him, her master. Dika, swinging her fist, told the protagonist that she was better suited for the title of Glorious One than he was. Dodging her fist punch, Ling Si asked about the 96%. He said with an angry expression on his face that he's got an awakening rate of 100%. Grabbing her wrist, the protagonist said that she wasn't even fit to be his target. Putting his back behind her, twisting her arm back, he said that his target was her master, Dark Lines. A silhouette flashed between them, and Dark Lines, grabbing Ling Si by the elbow, with a serious face asked about what he said, that he had an awakening rate of 100%. He said that becoming a perfect awakened was impossible. With a serious frown, he said that it looked like they would have to meet in real life after they quit the game. 
Wang Xi asked in surprise as to why they had to meet in real life. Turning around, Dark Lion said that it seemed like there was still a lot he didn't know. He said that he came to that conclusion after learning the reasons for it through research. Turning around, Dark Lion said that he wasn't sure how he managed to do that, but if he really is awakened with a 100% awakening rate, he hoped he could talk to him in real life. Dika, shyly twiddling her thumbs, asked about him meeting the master in real life. She said she was jealous. Dark Lions urged her to go. Dika surprisingly wanted to object, saying about their duel. Dark Lions said that unless he is lying about being the perfect awakened, she doesn't stand a chance against him at the moment. He added that she doesn't understand what it means to be the perfect awakened. Dika obediently replied that she understood. Ling Si silently stared in their wake. Dark Lions said he would contact him later. The protagonist asked about knowing where he lived. Dark Lions waved as he left and told him not to worry because he has his ways. Dika modestly said that she will fight him again next time. She asked to take care of her then. Wrapped in a red aura, she corrected herself and said that she will definitely make him die a horrible death. Dika told him not to talk about the fact that she had not warned him. Switching to a shy personality again, she said that she was looking forward to their next meeting. Dika and Dark Lions hopped away. Looking after them, Ling Si thought that they were both strange. Recalling Dark Lion's face, he thought that from the look on his face, he wasn't joking. Frowning, the protagonist thought about how there was still a lot he didn't know. He wondered if he was talking about being a perfect awakened or something else. Stepping forward, Ling Si thought that it didn't matter right now, and he wouldn't find any answers even if he thought about it hard. He decided to just wait for him to contact him. Bouncing off the chains enveloping the stone pillar, the protagonist thought that the most important thing at the moment was to finish what he came here for. Ling Si ran through an underground river with stone bridges, a gorge full of bats, and found himself in front of stone steps surrounded by tree roots and bushes. Covering his eyes from the bright light with his hand, he thought to himself that this was a little tiring. The protagonist thought that, if he remembered correctly, it should be just ahead. In front of him was a path running between the rocks. Underground world, Long Yu Town. Ling Si, standing in the stone-walled town, thought to himself that he's finally here. The dialogue box said, You have discovered Long Yu Town. You're the first person to discover this town. The man on the street told the child to hurry inside because there is an outsider here. Other people scattered fearfully at the sight of the protagonist. Ling Si thought about the fact that in his previous life, he had earned his way into this place when the Underground World update was already two months old, and by then this place was completely devoid of resources from other players. Looking at the passersby, he thought about the fact that the inhabitants of Underground World had a natural animosity towards surface dwellers, and that still seemed to be the case. In front of the protagonist was a large stone building that looked like a fortress, in front of which stood two purple torches. Two purple blades blocked Ling Si's way and a voice told him to stop because he, a nasty man, was not welcome here. Two black guards with cat faces stood in front of the protagonist. Ling Si said that he came in peace and he was a simple adventurer who came here looking for a mission. He thought about the fact that he didn't remember the guards here blocking the path of the players. He wondered if it was because he was the first one to trigger the events in this town. An elderly wrinkled man with a big nose asked why he, a surface dweller, had come here. He said they didn't have anything he wanted. The protagonist said he was just an adventurer from above ground. He politely asked if Long Yu Town had encountered any problem that needed to be solved. He added that he might be able to help them. The guard, pointing his purple blade at Ling Si, said that they didn't need help from humans because all humans were hypocritical and cunning creatures. The elderly man told him to wait. Guardian of Long Yu Town, Siba the Witch, level 70, asked Ling Si about what he just said about being able to help them. She asked about whether he knew what they were facing right now. The witch called him a braggart. The protagonist put his hand to his chest and respectfully asked Siba to share his worries with him. Waving his hands, Siba asked if he really thought he could handle the dragon-scaled demon who had them at their wit's end. Ling Si wondered if it was the sovereign rank mutant boss that only appeared randomly in the later part of the game. A huge purple tail surrounded the city, and the protagonist thought about it being a boss that entire guilds would fight. He said that the dragon-scaled demon is at least at sovereign rank, and its level is at least 85. It is a special monster that has both dark and evil elements. Unlike regular underground creatures, it is not afraid of fire elemental spells, but rather, holy elemental spells. Closing his eyes, Ling Si said that this is a creature that has evolved enough to speak the human language, yet is solitary in nature and moves about on its own. Its stomach is its weakness, but there's also a hidden weakness, which is its horns. As its horns can cast extremely destructive spells, one can use holy elemental spells on them when it is casting a spell to cause a counter charge. The witch listened to him in surprise. The protagonist said that this was also the only way to destroy his horns, and when it was done, it would enter a weakened state and any attack against it would cause three to four times the damage. 
He said with a smile that he didn't think even the underground dwellers knew as much about the dragon-scaled demon as he did. He asked if he had now earned the right to speak to her. Siba fell to her knees and exclaimed that she had never met anyone who knew as much about the terrible dragon-scaled demon as he did. She pleaded to Ling Si, asking him to help them. The protagonist, smiling contentedly, thought it was an advantage of being reborn, and he wasn't afraid to reveal what he knew if he wasn't talking to another player. The dialogue box says, You have received plus 10 reputation with the underground dwellers. Entering the fortress, Siba told the protagonist to follow him. Ling Si thanked her for her trust. He asked about what she said, that this dragon-scaled demon suddenly appeared in a cave near the city. The witch replied that it was correct and it suddenly appeared about a month ago. She said that it's incredibly foul-tempered, and according to the dwellers who have seen it, its stomach is very large, so it's likely to be pregnant. Ling Si raised an eyebrow and asked about the female dragon-scaled demon. He thought about the pregnancy explaining its aggressive behavior. Siva said that some of the pitiful townspeople went outside to gather resources when this dragon-scaled demon suddenly appeared, and they all turned into pools of blood. She said that if they didn't leave the cave, the people of Longyu Town would have to go elsewhere for their own safety. The witch said that she didn't know what his abilities were, but if he could really help them deal with this problem, she would thank him the faces of everyone in this town. Noticing the exclamation mark above her head, Ling Si thought of a mission prompt. The dialogue box said, Will you accept Siba the witch's request? Leng Si thought in surprise that he had never heard of such a mission in his past life, and could this be a unique mission? The witch said about the cave being right ahead. The protagonist looked ahead, opening his eyes in surprise. He saw the fog in front of him dissipate, and in front of him was a cave entrance leading downwards. Leng Si thought about whether this cave had been here all along. The witch said that she didn't need to remind him of how terrifying the dragon-scaled demon was, but she thought it was different from other adventurers. Clenching his teeth, Ling Si thought about the fact that no matter what its level or attack power was, it would surely be turned to ashes by the mere demonic breath of the pregnant dragon-scaled demon. However, judging from the fact that its belly was already so big one month ago, perhaps it had a way to deal with it. Above the entrance of the cave, a monster face shrouded in violet energy hung in the air. Ling Si, while descending to the bottom of the cave, thought about the fact that all the monsters in this cave must have a level higher than his, so he shouldn't let his guard down. The first thing he decided to do was to avoid direct collisions with any of them, otherwise he would attract the attention of even more monsters. After landing, the protagonist thought that this cave was too big. Looking around, he thought that it looked like he would have to make an effort to find where the dragon-scaled demon was. He walked further along the cave, thinking that visibility was low, but if he lit a torch, he would attract monsters to him, and he would have to rely on his senses and explore slowly. Standing behind the stone column, the protagonist wondered if the person who triggered this unique mission in his past life was able to pass it. He thought that if the person came here unprepared, he would have a hard time even finding the dragon-scaled demon. Peeking out from behind a stone pillar, he noticed a monster hanging from the ceiling. Face Ripper, a monster that looked like a huge bat, was asleep, hanging head down from the ceiling. Ling Si thought about the fact that if they killed him, they would use the sickles on its wings to peel the skin off his face, causing him to suffer from a physical and magical damage resistance minus 15 debuff after respawning. Superior invisibility potion appeared in his hand, and he thought that the safest way to deal with these monsters is to avoid them as much as possible, and using ranged attacks like spells or archery skills on them until they die is the safest strategy. The invisible protagonist jumped forward and thought that if the path was blocked, he had no other choice. He ran closer to the monster. Once behind face Ripper, Ling Si swung his dagger, striking the monster's back. Slumping on the ground, he thought to himself that his level was too low for this place, and thus his damage was not enough to kill it. Face Ripper flapped its huge wings. Frowning, the protagonist decided that he'd just have to go for the kill. Using elemental manifestation Thunderflash, Ling Si struck the monster with daggers and electricity. The monster died, and the protagonist thought, quickly disengage, then go invisible. Looking back at the many monsters hanging from the ceiling, he thought that fortunately, these monsters do not have an alarm passive skill, and it looks like no other monsters have been alarmed. The dialog box said, invisibility duration remaining, 60 seconds. A grappling hook appeared in Ling Si's hand, and he thought that even with the superior invisibility potion, he would be easily detected in a place where there were many monsters whose level was higher than his, and he needed to be careful. Using the grappling hook, he climbed higher. He ran past a level 74 monster with a reptile head, a level 75 monster with huge horns, a huge level 76 green monster with many teeth in its huge mouth and big red eyes. Ling Si thought to himself that he was glad that he had brought enough items with him for this trip to underground world, and because of them, he could handle exploring a place that he was too low level for. Holding the yellow potion bottle in his hand, he thought it was exhausting. Advancing further through the cave full of purple mist, 
He thought that it looks like he's almost there. Ling Xi stopped behind a stone wall. He saw a purple object shrouded in purple energy that looked like an egg. The protagonist thought to himself that it looked like he was right and it had already laid an egg. Looking at the egg, he thought about the fact that this egg is protected and the position of the egg does not bode well for him. Intense aura was present from the very entrance to this dungeon, and it seemed to have been created out of the mother's desire to protect her egg. Frowning, Ling Xi thought that it's unrealistic to face a boss of this level head-on, and in his past life, the boss and portal to this dungeon were not here. He assumed that they had spawned here for this unique mission. He thought he remembered that there was a special mechanic for this dungeon in the early days, and this was a route for players to retreat to. Peeking out from behind a stone wall, the protagonist thought about the fact that, perhaps worried that the new boss would prove too difficult to lead to frequent deaths of the exploring parties. The shortcut leading to the graveyard had been created to cut down on the time it took teams to run back after being respawned. He thought that, after all, there were too many high-level monsters along the way, However, this route was removed some time later in the new patch. After using Conqueror's Concealment, Ling Xi thought that he could make good use of this route now. As he approached the egg, he thought that he'd stack stealth with Conqueror's Concealment and Superior Invisibility Potion to get close to the dragon-scaled demon. The protagonist thought that the invisibility effect of Conqueror's Concealment wasn't very effective against high-level monsters, and he'd better reassure himself. Ling Xi with a sinister smile took Potent Sedative, a red potion shrouded in a red aura, in his hand and thought that he would use Potent Sedative and everything should be fine. He stood in front of the purple egg, thinking about his target being it. Placing his hand on the egg, the protagonist thought that this egg was the key to successfully completing this mission. Demon slowly and threateningly rose up behind the protagonist. Ling Xi, grabbing the egg, ordered Knight of the Glorious to hold the demon back. A knight in golden armor appeared between them. The monster turned to the man angrily. The dragon-scaled demon had a figure resembling a human woman and was level 86. She loudly asked how dare he take her child. Lang Xi gritted his teeth and thought about how even potent sedative didn't work. He wondered if this is the power of a mother's love for her child. The protagonist thought that he hadn't expected it. Apologizing, he said he was only doing it to complete the mission. The demon used meteoric black flame. Ling Xi held the egg above his head as he ran away, thinking that the aggro from this boss is way too intense and it must be because of this egg. He thought that there's still quite a fair bit to go till the end of this path. As he continued to run, he thought that on a one-way road like this he is as good as a sitting duck. Turning around, the demon noticed that rocks had begun to fall from the ceiling of the cave. A large stone began to fall on Ling Xi, who was carrying an egg above his head. He was surprised to see that the explosion had destroyed the stone falling on him. A demon surrounded by purple energy was swearing at the protagonist. Ling Xi thought about it protecting the egg. With a smirk, he thought about it being a good mother. Looking at the egg, the protagonist thought about her not blaming him for taking advantage of it. Dungeon Graveyard Ling Xi jumped out of the cave towards the stone skull image on the ground with eyes burning red. The dragon-scaled demon jumped out of the cave following him. As she continued to curse him, she shot out a purple beam of energy from her mouth. Ling Xi, dodging the beam of energy, shouted at her to stop trying to intimidate him and attack him if she dared. Smirking, he thought that he had planned to use the egg to lure the dragon-scaled demon out of the cave and then chase it away from the surroundings of Longwu Town to fulfill Siba's mission, but he didn't expect this egg to be so useful. The dragon-scaled demon in this unique mission is a lot stronger than the ones he's encountered in the dungeons in his previous life, and if it wasn't for the egg, he'd have died countless times in that passageway just now. Looking at the explosion from the purple energy beam, Ling Xi thought, that's the DPS of a guild level boss for you. But now that he has that egg as a shield, he wouldn't dare to use high DPS ranged attacks on him anymore. Thinking about the super-powered boss and the setting that makes it prioritize the safety of its egg, Ling Xi thought that this is the charm of a unique quest in Heavenland. Ling Xi is now at the graveyard. There are too many monsters on the way back to the entrance of the cave, and it would be really difficult to lure the dragon-scaled demon out of the cave. Frowning, the protagonist thought that as long as he can avoid the dragon-scaled demon's close-up attacks and deal with the monsters, he has an idea. He thought about the fact that it was the only thing he could do, and he would have to try. A huge green monster raised its head, noticing the protagonist running away from the demon. Monsters with huge horns also rose up, noticing Ling Xi running past. The protagonist, running past with an egg in his hands, attracted the attention of the monsters with reptilian heads. Ling Xi thought about the fact that he was surrounded, and he had no choice but to use one dagger with his free hand and give it his all. He ran towards the green monster who swung his fist. Using top time, he dodged the blow and struck at the monster's leg. Ling Xi clenched his jaws and thought that it was just the slightest graze, yet half of his HP is gone, and that's the danger of challenging a dungeon he's underleveled for. He figured it looked like he'd have to push himself to get his top time to another level. 
The protagonist was surrounded by a crowd of huge monsters. The veins on dragon-scaled demon's face swelled with anger and she looked around. Noticing something, she opened her mouth. Ling Si stood, surrounded by the monsters. Putting the egg on the ground, he thought that it looked like all the monsters had gathered here. The monsters rushed to attack, and Ling Si shouted for them to come at him. Jumping up, he said, and this egg is yours. The demon opened its eyes in surprise. Ling Si jumped over the purple egg. Purple energy began to gather in front of the demon's face, and he shouted that he would not hurt her child. A stream of purple energy began to vaporize the monsters. Ling Si pressed his lips together and said that it was terrifying. Looking at the fallen monsters around the untouched egg, he thought to himself that as he expected, the mob had been cleared out all at once. The demon swiftly ran forward. Leng Si noticed that it had reached out its hand towards the egg. Clenching his teeth in surprise, he thought about how fast it was. Frowning, Leng Si thought about the fact that if it was going to confront him head on for the egg, its chances of winning are nil. He too ran towards the egg, and a stream of yellow energy appeared beside the monster. The knight in golden armor plunged his sword into the monster's back. He told the protagonist that this was his chance. After grabbing the egg, Ling Si thought to himself that he didn't remember giving any orders. The knight told the monster not to even dream of harming his master. Hitting knight with a stream of purple energy, the demon shouted for him to die. The dialogue box reads, Knight of the Glorious has died. Before he revives, you cannot summon him again. Ling Si, mentally thanking the knight, thought that he would not miss the opportunity he had created for him. Once at the entrance of the cave, the protagonist used the grappling hook. The exit of the cave was getting closer and closer. The dragon-scaled demon chased after him. It exclaimed in surprise. The demon appeared on the surface, and Siba exclaimed fearfully that it was the dragon-scaled demon. Ling Si told the monster to settle its score with the right person. Turning around, she saw the main character. The dragon-scaled demon with tears on her face shouted to give her back her child. Ling Si, holding the egg in his hands, said that he had spent a lot of effort to get it and he would definitely not give it back. He said that this egg belongs to him now. The dialogue box said, Congratulations, you have left the dragon-scaled demon's aggro range. Ling Si, sitting on the ground next to the egg, exhaled and said that she had finally shook it off. Sitting at the foot of the high cliff, he thought about the fact that it was all thanks to this cliff, and this boss was very persistent. Ling Si thought about the fact that it chased him from the desert to the oasis, and such is the power of a mother-ass love. The dialogue box says, Congratulations on completing the mission from Siba the Witch of Longyu Town. For completing a mission above your level, your exp reward will be doubled. Ling Si got level 66 and his status window read. Having gained the respect and recognition of the townspeople of Longyu Town, you have gained access to more missions and the local trading function. The protagonist looked at the egg and thought that the exp reward and these other perks are rather nice, but the most valuable thing has to be this demon egg. The dialogue box says, Congratulations on obtaining the dragon-scaled demon egg. You may ask Siba the witch for more related information. After thinking for a while, Ling Si decided to put the report of the completion of the mission aside for now. Looking around, he thought that there was something wrong with this place. The grass and water around him were red in color. The protagonist thought that he remembered that he was attracted here by some smell when he was running away, and it must be the smell of these flowers. He noticed something and looked forward. A foot of red energy stepped on the grass. In front of him was a girl wearing black clothes with level 90 gray skin. Ling Si, hiding behind a rock, thought about whether it was a monster. He thought that it was his rotten luck, and he had only managed to escape from the dragon-scaled demon, and now he was facing an opponent of this level. Opening his mouth in surprise, he thought about the fact that only the level was shown, but not the name. The protagonist thought about the fact that this was a very strange place, and there must be some kind of clue in such a place. Looking at the dialogue box, he noticed that it had a title. Above the girl's head was written the title Protector of the Undead Mercenary's Altar and Ling Si thought he remembered the name. The girl with gray skin turned around. Jumping high up, she was right above the protagonist. Ling Si turned around and noticed that she was very fast. The girl hit the ground with force and the protagonist, gritting his teeth, dodged using top time. A dagger appeared in his hand. The girl took the daggers from his hand with large red chains. She said she didn't expect to meet an adventurer wielding those daggers. Ling Si thought about what he remembered now, and his daggers are called Bone Knife of the Undead Mercenary. The girl stood in front of him, holding his red energy daggers in front of her. She said that for many years no race above ground has set foot on these hallowed grounds, and she believes that his arrival must be Destiny's Calling, wielder of the Bone Knife of the Undead Mercenary. The girl said that this was the end of the bloody river, undead altar. In front of Ling Si were steps leading through an archway to the top. 
The girl stood behind the arch, surrounded by white flowers. She said that as he is the one chosen by the altar, she shall guide him to offer himself in sacrifice. Ling Si, after asking about sacrifice, thought about whether they were telling him to die. A bunch of red skulls were lying among the white flowers. Looking at the girl, the protagonist thought about how he's not going to get himself sacrificed like that. The girl told him that he could reach the depths of the altar with his dagger. Looking at his dagger, Ling Si thought about how true that was. He was surprised to notice that the interface had changed, and the description panel for Bone Knife of the Undead Mercenary now had the gilding runs of the Blood River. The protagonist raised his dagger, the arch began to glow bright red, and red energy lifted the bones and skulls up. A pillar of red energy rose above the altar. Ling Si looked up. A bridge appeared in front of them, leading to a large stone structure, and the protagonist thought that this was the intersection of the altar. Climbing up the stone steps, he politely asked what exactly is this sacrifice she speaks of, and what meaning does it bear? The girl replied that he is not yet qualified to know the details of the sacrifice. She said that he would find out if he wanted to take the altar's test. She told him to offer his sacrifice. In front of them was a huge door with red lights. Ling Si tensed in thought wondering if they were not actually going to sacrifice him. He thought about the fact that it took a lot for him to get to the underground world, and it would be really bad if he just died like that. The voice turned to him and told him that as the owner of the bone knife of the undead mercenary, he had the right to offer a sacrifice. The voice asked if he will offer a sacrifice. Ling Si asked what would happen if he said no. He thought about the fact that he doesn't know the details of the sacrifice, and it's too risky. If it's a permanent debuff, he's screwed. The voice answered him, if you are to refuse, the protector will reclaim the daggers from you and take away your right to offer sacrifice. The protagonist frowned and thought about having to fight a level 90 protector at his current level that he knew nothing about. He thought that this is tantamount to death, and this is more like a forced mission. Ling Si shouted to let him see what this sacrifice of theirs is. The voice replied, Brave human adventurer, you have agreed to offer a sacrifice. This shall be your greatest honor. The dialogue box said, Within one month's time, you will have to offer a sovereign ranked dragon type heart, a sovereign ranked demon type heart, and a sovereign ranked human type heart. All three hearts have to be at least level 85. Ling Si asked in surprise that he had to get three hearts from three different races of sovereign rank, and in addition to them having to be level 85 or higher, he had to bring them all within a month. The protector said that the ancient altar had bestowed upon him his mission. She asked him to fulfill it in the time given to him. She said that failure would cause his stats to be cut by half and he would lose his right to wield these daggers. Ling Si, looking at his daggers, thought about the fact that cutting his characteristics in half is too harsh. Protector said that if he managed to bring the hearts in the time given to him, his daggers would be raised to the legendary grade. Thinking about the hearts of three specific sovereign rank species, the protagonist decided that he needed to prepare himself carefully for this. Protector said that the countdown had begun, and she wished him success. Ling Si, after a bit of silence, apologized and asked if she happens to be a sovereign ranked human. Protector replied with a slight smile that she has both demon and human blood in her. Ling Si rubbed his chin and thought to himself that he couldn't afford any mistakes, after all, she was a level 90 sovereign rank opponent. He decided to return to Long Mu Town first to collect the rewards of his previous mission, and this mission he would have to complete one step at a time because he couldn't get anxious and rush into it. The protagonist thought about not underestimating these sovereign ranked bosses that are designed for entire guilds to tackle, and he is not confident that he can do this on his own at his current level. He thought with a serious face that it was time to mobilize Penumbra. The protagonist thought that he should go to the library first, and maybe he could shortlist some targets there. Ling Si stood in front of a stone structure floating in the air next to a waterfall. On the dialog box, the teleportal can transport you to the waypoints you have already discovered. Long Yu Town. Ling Si stepped out of the blue portal. A passerby shouted that this was the human thief who had saved their town. Another suggested that he call Siba. The protagonist thought that the teleportal is quite handy, and it looks like he gained access to it because he completed the dragon-scaled demon mission. He thought that he was glad he didn't have to walk back here because there was no telling how long it would have taken him. The protagonist noticed that the dragon-scaled demon bones outside the city were gone. He thought to himself that it was probably because he had accomplished a unique mission. Siba loudly asked where that thief was. Ling Si told her to calm down because he could assure her that he'd shaken that dragon-scaled demon off his trail. He said he came here to ask her about that egg. Siba asked him in surprise that he had actually stolen the egg. A huge purple egg appeared in Ling Si's hands, and the witch exclaimed that it was a demon egg. The protagonist carelessly dropped the egg on the ground, and Siba worriedly told him to be careful not to break it. Ling Si with the egg in his hands entered the witch's house, and Siba told him that it was really shocking. She told him that he was now the hero of their town. After looking at the egg, the witch asked if he knew how to deal with this demon egg. 
Ling Xi thought to himself that he had never heard of any player completing this unique task in his past life, and since the dialogue was prompting him in this direction, he should probably follow this train of conversation. He said that he would like her advice about it, because he doesn't know how he should deal with it. Siba said that usually there's nothing to be gained from getting the egg of a dragon-scaled demon, because the egg would automatically enter a state of hibernation after leaving its mother's side. Ling Xi asked in surprise if that meant that the egg was useless. The witch replied that it didn't, and there was something that could be done, although the chances of success were extremely slim. Glancing at the protagonist, she said that whether it would work or not depended solely on his luck. Sticking her hand in the trunk, she said that since he helped them solve a big problem, she wanted to give him something, and she doesn't have much use for it anyway. Siba gave the protagonist the ancient potion of bloodline deviation and said that the decision to use it on the egg or not was up to him, and it would be his reward. Ancient potion of bloodline deviation, a rarity of an item that is only hard about and hardly ever seen said to be dropped from a specific sovereign rank monster at an extremely low drop rate. Mixing this potion with the blood essence of another monster of a different element or race will give your pet a chance to obtain a second elemental attribute or a second race. However, the chances of success are very slim. Success is dependent on the level of the blood essence provided. Ling Xi thought he didn't expect that and asked if it would work on the egg. Siba replied that it would work. She said that she had come across this information by chance in an ancient text and success would depend on his luck. She asked if he knew what would happen if he does succeed. Ling Xi asked what would happen. The witch said that since this egg was birthed by a mutated dragon-scaled demon, he would get a double-mutated sovereign-ranked dragon-scaled demon pet. The protagonist looked at the egg in surprise. Tightly pressing his lips together, Ling Xi thought about the fact that with a twice-mutated sovereign-ranked dragon-scaled demon pet, no one would be able to surpass him on the pet ranking board that would come in the future. Turning around, Siba said that if he fails, then the potion will be wasted. She said the decision to try it was up to him. Ling Xi said he would do it. Ling Xi removed the cork from the potion. Letting the blood drain from his hand, he thought about the fact that since the chance to win the title of Heavenland's number one pet was right in front of him, he was obligated to try no matter what. The protagonist remembered the witch's words that if he decided to use the potion on the egg, he could mix it with the blood essence of another element or another race. She had told him to think carefully before making a decision. Ling Si, looking at his hand with a smirk, thought that of course he would use his own blood essence, human blood essence. The potion and the main character's blood dripped onto the demon egg. Ling Si stood on the roof of the stone tower, looking at the egg. Nothing was happening, and he silently stared at the egg. Squatting down, the protagonist asked why there was no reaction. He asked, did it fail? Exhaling, Ling Xi put his hand on his face and said that apparently it was not meant to be. He said that he would just put it away for now and think about what to do with it later. He remembered the witch's words, if you are the chosen one, who knows? There might be a surprise in store for you. Ling Xi, frowning, thought about the witch's parting smile. He wondered if she already knew it was going to go like this or did she lie to him. He thought about how the AI of these NPCs is getting more and more impressive, and they are acting just like real people. Looking at the dialogue box, the protagonist thought that now that he had trading access to Long Yu Town, he'll have no issues with making trades in the underground world. The equipment that can be bought in this town has some pretty decent stats. Passersby looked at Ling Si and said with admiration that he was their hero. Ling Si can use the rare items from above ground to trade with them when he's free, and get some items in bulk for the guild. He is pretty much the only one who can make trades like these now. The protagonist thought of something else he needed to know before he left. He walked up to a store with a summon shop sign. The girl with blonde hair behind the counter asked about summoning a summon. She said that he could revive and restore a summon's vitality with something called a soul stone. Ling Si, thinking about soul stone, thought that it didn't seem like something he could easily get from the trading post. Thinking back to Night of the Glorious, the protagonist thought about how it always feels like Night is very intelligent, and his AI is so advanced that it feels like he has feelings. He decided that he needed to revive it as soon as possible, and he needed to go back to the guild to get some information. Penumbra Guild Ling Si, sitting at the table, asked Stillwaters about what he wanted to improve the guild's headquarters. Stillwaters answered in an affirmative and said that they were the number three guild after all, and it would only be natural for them to improve the place a bit. He said that whether it was the physical buildings or their equipment, they would have to be refurbished and scaled up. Ling Si asked if they have enough funds for that. Stillwaters said not to underestimate the foundation of Nebulous and said they managed it with much care. He added that they have Tiana, and she's really good at things like expansion. Toko Lai, sitting on the table, told the main character that it's nice to see him stop by for once and many guilds and workshops have contacted them lately in hopes of collaborating with them. 
She said she also needed him to look at their guild's recent expenditure and income, their guild inventory, and the various status of their guild members. She said she needed him to approve and sign all those documents. Many dialogue boxes appeared in front of the protagonist. Coco Lai said that the friend he asked to help raise the level last time was a real super noob. Ling Si, smiling awkwardly, asked if she had taught her how the game worked. Coco Lai replied with a smirk in the affirmative and said that she likes to train beginners. After imagining Coco Lai practicing, the protagonist thought about how Zhu Ting is going to get stomped all over again. Stillwaters said that now that he is back, there are many things he has to review and confirm. Ling Si, scratching the back of his head awkwardly, told him to deal with those things on his own because he is really not good with them. Stillwaters asked if he was trying to dump everything on him and just walk away again. Ling Si replied that compared to that, he has more urgent things to do in underground world. Stillwaters looked at him in surprise. The protagonist said that this time, he needed their help too. He said to gather the shadow members and added that he needs the two of them too. Ling Si said that they were going to defeat the first sovereign rank guild dungeon before the other guilds did. Coco Lai asked in surprise that he needed them too. She asked about him wanting her and Stillwaters to join his shadow team as well. Ling Si replied that that was correct, and the fact that he decided to make Shadow an independent team in Penumbra was only for the sake of Tilly's and Dark Feather, because it would be difficult for them to be directly involved in Penumbra's activities. He said that this time they are challenging a sovereign rank guild dungeon, and he wants to ensure their victory. Coco Lai and Stillwaters looked at the main character. Ling Si added that they couldn't let the top ranking archer and cleric gather dust. He told them not to worry because it's just a temporary arrangement, and after they go through the dungeons, they can always leave the team if they want, and he won't mind. Coco Lai asked if that makes them mercenaries for his shadow. Stillwaters asked Ling Si why he suddenly wants to take down Sovereign Rank Guild dungeons now. He said that the new update came out just recently. He asked if he was in too much of a hurry. The protagonist said it would take a long time to explain. Turning around, he said that, in simple words, it had to do with the solo mission he received. Ling Si finished explaining the situation and said that right now, he urgently needs the hearts of three different sovereign rank races, otherwise, all his stats will be halved, and he's really in a bind. Coco Lai and Stillwaters remained silent. Coco Lai said that the heats of three different sovereign rank races is a little too harsh. Ling Si added that it is a forced mission. Stillwaters told the protagonist to give him his strategy to win like before. Ling Si said he still doesn't have enough information and he doesn't have a surefire strategy. Stillwaters, frowning, said that he hoped that he, as guildmaster, knows that he now represents their entire guild. He said that, before having a full grasp on the situation, he couldn't just accept such assignments, which could cost them dearly if he fails. He told him to think about how much it would affect the guild and its members if the leader of the guild were to have all his stats halved. Stillwaters said that he was now the pillar of Penumbra, and from a player's point of view there's nothing wrong with going after stronger equipment, however, he was now responsible for an entire guild. Coco Lai looked worriedly at Stillwaters and thought that she had never seen him so angry before. Stillwaters said that the moment he found out that he had to make sacrifice, he should have thought twice about whether he should enter that altar. He said that if he couldn't handle this mission, they might even be challenged by other guilds, and the fate of Penumbra is at stake here. Ling Si listened silently, and Stillwaters told him that he was no longer a solo player, and every action he takes affects his teammates, his guild, and everyone around him. He said that he hoped he would keep that in mind from now on. Ling Si remained silent. Coco Lai wordly asked Stillwaters where he was going. He replied that he was going to make preparations because they can't make any mistakes in the dungeon. Coco Lai told Ling Si not to blame Stillwaters for the tone he used just now because the guild is very important to him. Ling Si replied that he knew. He thought about the fact that Stillwaters had just reminded him that in this life, he was no longer a solo player who could do whatever he wanted. Remembering his teammates from Shadow and people from Penumbra, the protagonist thought about the fact that he now had teammates, a guild and responsibilities. The old man told the protagonist not to play games as soon as he woke up, but to eat breakfast first. Ling Si, looking at the dialog box, said that he was looking for information about the new update on the official website, and it was very important to him because it would affect many other people. He said that he would have breakfast soon. The old man called out to Ling Si. The protagonist asked what happened. The old man said with a smile that compared to the first time he met him, he seemed to be much happier and more positive. He asked if he had made many new friends in the game. Ling Si, a little embarrassed, remained silent. The old man, laughing, said that when he first met him, he was worried that he wouldn't be able to make friends with that aloof manner of his, and it seems he was worried for nothing. He said that having friends he could play with was wonderful, and he was very happy for him. Laughing, the old man said it reminds him of his youth. The protagonist, smiling, thought about the fact that now he also had a family. Penumbra Guild. Stillwaters was watering the flowers with a watering can. 
Ling Xi said that he had come up with the strategy he had asked for. He said that putting together the information about the new update on the official Heavenland website, the things that can be found in the in-game library, the clues and NPC backstories, and so on, he's decided on the dungeons to challenge, and he has already sent him the details. The protagonist told him to trust him and that he would take all the consequences for making the unwise decision to accept this mission, and he won't do without making ample preparations. Stillwaters said he would not look at the information he sent. He said he can see that he has a very good outfit, and how hard he worked to gather the information can be seen in his high-end outfit. Smiling, Stillwaters added that those dark circles under his eyes told him that he wasn't lying. Links he said that he just spent a little more time than usual to gather information. Stillwaters told him not to let that stop them while going through the dungeons. The protagonist replied that the time he spends in the game is the best time for his body to rest in real life. Someone called out to Links he from behind. Turning around, he saw Coco Lai and other people coming out of the portal and wondered what they were all doing here. Ruko said that they heard about his forced mission and he doesn't care if they walk three hearts, ten or one hundred, they will help him get them. Tiana, Narlo, Tillys and Darkfeather walked out of the portal. Coco Lai said with a smile that Stillwaters knew that Ling Si would quickly come up with a strategy and told them to be ready to go at any time, so she had Tiana and the others prepare in advance. She said they all changed their schedules to accommodate her and gathering all three hearts in a month would be difficult. Stillwaters told Ling Si to take a look at the team interface. He said that he was so busy with his research that he didn't notice the team messages at all, and he added himself and Coco Lai to the team. Ling Si thanked him and said that now he was even more confident in accomplishing the mission and it would definitely take their team to the next level, and on top of that, they can make a name for Penumbra as well. Stillwaters told Ling Si that he believes in him, just like he believed before that he can lead Penumbra to new heights. Narlo, putting his arm around the hero's waist, grudgingly asked why he had not immediately told his faithful servant about the mission. He said that he could help shoulder his burden. Ruko, grinning, said that he finally gets to raid a dungeon with Ling Si again. Tilly's told Ling Si that she had deflected a lot of the orders her workshop had received to come to his aid. He said he'd better take them to an interesting dungeon. Darkfeather watched the bird nonchalantly. Ling Si was surprised to notice a wagon. A multitude of wagons stopped beside them. The guy in armor pulling the cart said that even the best guilds, Advent of Thousand Autumns and Divine Chamber, hadn't set foot in the high-level dungeons from the new update and their guildmaster was really something else. Another guy said that even if they weren't participating, they could still help deliver resources. Ling Si asked why all their guild members came and brought all those resources. Tiana said that Stillwaters asked her to prepare all of this and it was for the guild dungeon raid. The protagonist said that means it's the preparations he was talking about earlier. He said Stillwaters sure is a reliable guy. Tiana with a smile told Ling Si to try harder. The protagonist told her not to worry about thinking that things are very different from his past life in which he used to fight alone, and now he has the weight of everyone's expectations and cheers on his shoulders, and that is his motivation. Ling Si said with a confident smile that he will definitely come back victorious this time. He called Shadow forward and said that it was time to take down the guild dungeon, the Howling Mad King. Someone in the huge stone room asked about the Howling Mad King. The big man said he didn't expect Penumbra to have the confidence to take on that dungeon. The man sitting in the window said that Ling Si seems to be on a roll lately, and since he surprised everyone by defeating Sawyer of Wolf's Fang, not only has he become the head of the guild, but he's also going at it hard. He said that it looked like he was going to strengthen Penumbra's position among the guilds. Taba Zengo said that that guy is really something else. He said that even they don't have the confidence to take down that dungeon, and according to the information released in the update, the dungeon boss is sovereign rank. He asked how he was going to deal with that. Temptress told him about how the fact that he keeps thinking about Ling Si makes their rivals in love. The third person in the conversation said that guild dungeons are not private and anyone can enter. He said that Divine Chamber doesn't seem to want to clash with Penumbra, who's currently on the rise, but they, Thousand Autumns, can't keep getting one up like that. He said that, in that case, the two of them should get in there and have some fun too. Holding a deck of cards, the man said that, from his divination, the revelations from his prophecies told him that they had a very great chance of victory, and it looks like that Ling Si is going to be an annoying one. He said he didn't like this revelation at all. He scattered the deck of cards with the Joker in his hand, and he told them to go and change that fate. The man with the sinister grin said they must lose. The meteor shower pounded the rocks and stone walls. The Howling Mad King Dungeon Battleground. Narlo, looking out from behind a stone pillar, said that this damage is insane. Ling Si said that this is a guild dungeon after all, and they don't take as long as normal dungeons to run through, but there are just as many monsters here. Frowning, he said the most annoying thing is that all the monsters here attack the players at once. He said it's like they're fighting in a war. 
Dark Feather, looking through the telescopic sight, said that those up there are all level 65 guards. Leng Si thought about the fact that he had not even joined a guild in his previous life, so he had never had a chance to participate in a guild dungeon, and he could only try to improvise based on the information he had gathered. A huge guard in steel armor put his hand on the cannon. The protagonist thought that a boss of this level must be equivalent to that of a mini-boss in a regular dungeon. The guards continued firing cannons, and one of them was hit by a red energy shot. Coco Lai fired a yellow energy shot from her bow in the shape of a bird. Her shot rushed towards the tower and broke two cannons. The guardian stood in a cloud of dust. Coco Lai said that it's tough. Lang Si told Dark Feather and Coco Lai to continue providing cover with their ranged attacks. Stillwaters said that this is, after all, a guild dungeon with the highest difficulty. He said that the critical damage, regular damage, both physical and magic resistance, and HP of the monsters are all greatly increased, and he heard both Thousand Autumns and Divine Chamber were thinking about raiding the dungeon, but gave up after sending some of their members to scout things out. Raising his palm, he said that this showed the difficulty of this dungeon, and Leng Si would have to figure out a way to deal with this. Leng Si replied that he had a pretty good idea. He told Ruko that he'll be depending on him. Ruko turned around in surprise. Ruko was making his way towards the fortress with a potion in his hand, defending himself with his huge hand. Leng Si said that while Ruko was getting all their attention, they would attack the side of the castle where the defenses were weakest. Narlo asked if Ruko wouldn't be in great danger because of this, since his opponents would be captain-level guards. The protagonist told him not to look down on Stillwater's abilities as a priest. Stillwater said that he's giving him more than he's due. Leng Si replied that this is not true, and they have Stillwater's immense priest buff skills and resources that have been prepared for this dungeon, and among the resources are loads of healing potions to help sustain him. The main character said that with the buff, healing potions and Ruko's naturally high defense, as long as they break into the castle quickly enough to meet up with him, he'll be alright. He said to trust in Ruko's strength. Ruko shouted, swinging a huge fist. His punch broke through the barriers at the entrance to the fortress. Leng Si, using a grappling hook, said that Ruko had entered the castle and they should hurry. He said that after entering the castle, they must avoid triggering aggro. He told the others not to get into unnecessary battles. The protagonist said that there are many floors in this castle, and on each floor there is an elite guard captain guarding the stairs, and they can only get to the next floor by defeating him. Narlo asked about avoiding aggro, does he mean something like what he did last time with invisibility potions? Leng Si said no. Jumping off the wall, he said that invisibility potions are easily seen through when fighting opponents that are higher level than them, and they're basically useless here. The protagonist said that they needed to split up, and one group would be responsible for luring the mob away, while the other group would fight the remaining elite captain. Leng Si and his team jumped on top of the elite captain. Temptress, stepping her foot on the face of one of the defeated guys, said that Penumbra had prepared quite well for this guild dungeon, and judging by the amount of resources, it seems like they've gone all out. Taba Zengo said that he received news that their past guild leader, Stillwaters, and vice guildmaster, Coco Lai, have all joined Ling Si's shadow. Temptress replied that then it's no wonder that the dungeon area is being guarded by so many Penumbra minions, and it's because their leaders have all gone to the front line. Stabbing his sword into the ground, Taba Zengo offered to conceal their presence or they would realize they had broken in. A huge yellow magic circle appeared under their feet. Temptress told him not to worry, because they'd all been hit by her charm spell, and there's no way she'd let them revive to go send news that they're here. Taba Zengo said that the guildmaster tasked them to keep them from succeeding, and, from the looks of it, they would only have one chance. He said that they would have to wait for the best time to strike. Presence Disruption Formation, a spell that can completely conceal one's presence, as well as disrupt any form of tracking. The effect will be immediately dispelled upon exiting the spell's range, and will last for a maximum of one hour if the player stays within range. Taba Zengo, with a slight smile, said to leave Ling Si to him when the time came, and to do what she wanted with the rest. Temptress agreed and said that fighting so many people made her a little nervous, but she wouldn't fight Ling Si along with him this time. A bird flew up from her hand, and she told Seduction Crow about how she would have to trouble it to help them keep an eye on them. The bird flew over the castle and Temptress said that they had already entered the castle. Stillwaters used Matrix Confinement, and Chains bound the guards. Stillwaters said that they captured another elite guard. He said they were running out of time, and they had to kill him before Ling Si returned. Dark Feather said that he successfully captured the elite guard. Ling Si replied that it was perfect, and they would use their superior speed to lure the aggro of the regular guards. He said that this way they could focus on the elite guard and defeat him. The protagonist thought about the fact that the reason they can actually use this strategy is because they have Stillwaters as their priest. Being one of the best priests, he has the ability to control opponents, a skill their team has always lacked. 
On top of that, his precision makes everything so much easier. Hart Stillwaters, one of the four great priests crowned by the players in the later stages of the game in Ling Si's previous life. He was originally Nebulous Guildmaster, but that has completely changed in this life because of the appearance of the main character. Frowning, the main character thought that his ability couldn't be wasted, and in this life he should use this opportunity to make him the strongest priest in the entire game, a power he could use. Ling Si said that there's a lot of commotion on Ruko's end and offered to rush to him. Running inside the fortress, he said to take them all with him. A multitude of guards ran after them. Ruko fought the crowd of guards. Something hit one of the guards in the back while Ruko was drinking a potion. The guard fell to the ground from the impact of the yellow energy. Dark Feather, using aggro pull, was in the air with a sniper rifle in his hands. Ling Xi told him that he'll be depending on him to draw the aggro of those guards in the distance and those that have left behind. He said that he'll handle the ones that are within range and near Ruko. The protagonist thought that, with his ultra-ranged attacks, Dark Feather can pull the aggro of any opponent that leaves the mob at any time, and the two of them are the best combo to take on this task. He shouted to Ruko to bring those guards over here. Ruko obeyed. Ruko ran towards Ling Si and Dark Feather. What was happening was reflected in the eyes of the temptress bird that flew above them. Ling Xi said that they'll trap them behind this, then wait to regroup with Stillwaters and the others. Coco Lai used transformative attack, Spirit Leopard, and a yellow magic arrow flew at the chain guardian. After breaking the chains, the guardian dodged the arrow. Coco Lai irritatedly asked Stillwaters about his confinement skill isn't very reliable. Stillwaters awkwardly scratched the back of his head and replied that they were fighting a monster of a higher level, so the effectiveness of his spell was reduced by at least half, and it's already amazing that it has performed to that extent. Narlo jumped forward and struck with his sword, shrouded in electricity, and said that he would try to attack it head on. The guardian struck with his fist, and Narlo dodged. He was surprised to see the fist pointing in his direction. A yellow magical barrier appeared between Narlo, who was lying on the ground, and the guardian, blocking the guardian's attack. Stillwaters, using magic shield, with a smile told Narlo not to underestimate it. He said that he'll be sent right back to the revival point if he gets hit by this elite guard. Tilly's appeared above the guard, swinging her staff. She kicked the guard in the head and they were facing each other. Narlo, exhaling, thanked Tilly's and said it was close. Tilly's called out to him, and Narlo looked at her. She told him not to even think about dragging them down here. Narlo smiled and said that it looked like it was time for him to get serious because he might embarrass his master. Getting to his feet, he said to leave it to him. Tilly's grinned and said it was her prey. The guard spotted a silhouette in the sky, surrounded by crows, firing two pistols. Ling Xi told Dark Feather that he'd leave him in charge of kiting the aggro of these two elite guards. She told him to try to lead them to where Stillwaters and the others were and then work together to take them down. Dark Feather agreed. Ling Xi, looking at Ruko fighting the guards, thought about the fact that now it's up to Ruko and him to trap the regular guards here. Those elite guards have a skill called morale boost that will be triggered when their HP falls below a certain point, causing all the guards within range to go berserk, and they'd be completely annihilated if that happens. The protagonist pondered that the first trial of the dungeon is to kill all the elite guards. This guild dungeon is designed for up to 15 people, but there are only 7 of them. Not only are they few in number, but they are also underleveled for this dungeon. That's why they needed a detailed attack and teamwork strategy. Wang Si thought that they could not be as reckless as they were in previous dungeons, and have to ensure that every step is carried out properly. He thought that, however, there are perks to having fewer people in a team too, and the most important element of success still boils down to Shadow's teamwork. Wang Si looked away in surprise. Stillwaters, surrounded by yellow energy, held up a book and used blinding hunt and merciful nourishment. All Tilly's and Narlo's stats have been strengthened. Duration, 10 seconds. Narlo said that he'll handle it. Tilly's said that she'll be the one to take it down. They used Dragon Cry and Fire Phoenix simultaneously on the blinded guard. Ling Si saw a cloud of dust rising above the ground from their blows. He said that the rate at which skills are being cast one after the other really gives the enemy no room to retaliate. The protagonist thought that their level of teamwork exceeded his expectations. Narlo said that Dark Feather had brought two more elite guards with him. Dark Feather, firing his pistols at the guards, said, GG. Tilly's said, two more for target practice. Coco Lai told Stillwaters to stay back. Stillwaters said that he'll help them recuperate. Ling Si smirked and thought that his strategy was being perfectly executed through each of their extraordinary abilities, and even without having experienced this dungeon in his previous life, they could still clear this high-difficulty dungeon with such ease. He decided that he will take this newly formed shadow to the top. Two guards shrouded in a red aura used morale boost. Narlo said that he shouldn't have conserved his mana and just went all out. Swearing, he said that he couldn't and stock kill them both. Someone said something about them having a quarter of their health left, and they've gone berserk. 
Stillwater said that the two elite guards both triggered that skill of theirs, and they now have two stacks of the Berserk effect. He said they can't take them head on, and, being underleveled, any attack from them will kill them right away. He shouted for everyone to retreat. Both guards rushed towards Narlo. Looking at the guards' approaching fist, he gritted his teeth and thought that it was much faster than before, and he was finished. Leng Si rushed forward and used Elemental Manifestation Thunderflash and stacked attacks to hit both guards with electricity. With a smirk, he said that he would let them have the stacked attacks he racked up from killing regular guards. Temptress watched the progress of their battle with a spell. Sitting on a staff floating in the air, she said that just watching their teamwork is setting her heart on fire and every single one of them in that team is a pro. Taba Zengo said that if a full team of 15 people entered this dungeon, there would be 8 elite guards and a dozen ordinary guards. When he first came to scout this dungeon, these elite guards kept giving the regular guards a berserk buff, and while it would be easy to deal with one, it was impossible to get through the crowd of them. He said that he didn't expect Ling Si to use the guild dungeon modifier mechanism so successfully, and now when the number of raid members is less than half the maximum limit, the dungeon automatically reduces the number of elite guards by half. With seven of them, there are only four elite guards, thus greatly reducing the number of guards overall. Taba Zengo said with a slight smile that this mechanism was only officially made known by Heavenland just this morning, and to think that Ling Si is already taking advantage of it so soon. He said that he couldn't help but admire his intelligence, and it looks like their guildmaster's worries are not ungrounded. Looking at the magical vortex in the sky, he said that this thief, who was originally a nobody, seemed to have now become a threat to their absolute dominance. Temptress said that they need to kill him before he has a chance to grow. The dialogue box says, all four elite guards have been killed. The door to the Mad King's tower is now open. Ruko asked how they even cleared the trial. He asked about their team members almost being killed and if the elite guards were really that strong. Lang Si said that their teamwork was near perfect. He told Narlo that his attempts to save his mana had almost ruined everything, and they'd have to look thoroughly into his mistake when they did the debrief later. Tilly's called him a burden. Narlo apologized. Stillwaters said that Ruko was almost finished using what potions they had. He told Coco Lai, calling her Coco, to get the logistics team to send some more over. Coco Lai, embarrassed, said that just because they were childhood friends didn't mean he could call her that in front of so many people. Dark Feather looked up thoughtfully. Seduction Crow flashed between the towers, and Dark Feather wondered if that was just an ordinary bird. Ling Si called out to go on. He said that the level 85 boss, the Mad King, was still waiting for them at the top. They went to the portal, and the protagonist said that their adventure had just begun. Exiting the portal, Temptress asked about if, in case they do indeed manage to defeat the boss in the end, and they show up to snipe the loot, wouldn't that be a bit nasty of them? Taba Zengo replied, not really. He said that this is how these guild dungeons have been designed in this game, and since guild dungeons are public zones, it's only natural that all sorts of confrontations and gaming strategies can be tolerated here. Looking at the stone walls around them, he said that the space in here is really massive. Temptress said that Ling Si is someone she respects, and surprise attack doesn't seem all that honorable. Taba Zengo told her that, normally, there wouldn't be too much of a difference between the abilities of the major guilds in a game. The guilds would generally be keeping each other in check and trying to hold each other back, either openly or secretly. So in guilds like these, while attacking, each guild would have to be especially on guard against the competing guild schemes. Taba Zengo said that he was sure they were aware of these risks too, so there was no point in quibbling over whether their actions were honorable or not. Smiling, he said that it was a little different this time, and Penumbra had the confidence to take down a dungeon that even they, Thousand Autumns, had no means to. He suggested that they probably don't expect anyone else to come. Temptress, smiling, said that she hadn't expected Taba Zengo to have such deep thoughts. She said that they'll keep following them and let them help them clear the monsters ahead. She added that they can also use this opportunity to get the key to this guild dungeon. Temptress said that the benefits of others' labor would save them both time and effort. Taba Zengo looked out from around the corner and noticed a crowd of huge monsters. Temptress wondered why there were still so many monsters here. She asked as Ling Si and the others walked past them. The Mad King's Tower, the depths of Floor 1. Stillwaters used Blinding Hunt. The dialogue box says, enemies within range have been afflicted with blinding. Duration, 10 seconds. Coco Lai called out that the duration of blind is shorter when dealing with elite monsters. She called someone to hurry and follow up. Narlo said he would do it, and the cooldown on his skills is over. He told the others to take this opportunity to use some mana potions. Using caged electric binding, he hit his opponents with blue electricity and said that it's time to slow down. Narlo ran after one of the monsters. Chains bound the monster and Stillwaters said that he would take care of the one that escaped. 
Coco Lai, shooting yellow magic arrows from her bow, said, let's cycle through that set of skills once more. Stillwaters used blinding hunt, blinding the monsters nearby. Ling Xi climbed up the stone steps. Climbing up the spiral stone stairs, Ruko asked what king of fun they were going to have on the next floor. The protagonist replied that from the information he had gathered, after entering Mad King's tower, the next floors wouldn't be much different from the first, and they're still all about killing mobs. He said that of course they can speed clear the floors by using skills to control the mobs like they did earlier. However, the difficulty level of the monsters will get increasingly harder with each floor, so it will be harder for them to keep using this strategy. Ling Xi concluded that it's inevitable that they will have to clear the mobs. Ruko said that it's boring. Ling Xi said that each dungeon is designed around one basic concept because they wanted to ensure that each dungeon has its own style and type. However, to a team that likes taking on challenges, continually fine-tuning the details of their plan and working hard to think of how to clear a dungeon faster, thus obtaining better rewards, this is also one of the great joys of gaming. He added that both the goals this time are to be the first to get through the dungeon and get the heart, and speed is not their priority. Tilly said that the challenge to speed clear guild dungeons would probably ignite the training market. Ruko scratched the back of his head and said that he didn't understand that at all. Stillwaters said that the unity of style and type determines the similarity in the design of each dungeon's trials. He said with a smile that once they find a way to pass one trial, within the same dungeon, all they have to do is make some changes to get the dungeon strategy. Ling Xi finished his sentence for him. Stillwaters said that was an interesting point of view, and he had never thought about it. He said that it's worth thinking about. Ling Xi said that he's only benefiting from the teachings of others himself. He said that they are almost to the second floor and they need to get ready. He said, let's get to the top in one go. Ruko said, to the treasure. Taba Zengo and Temptress fought the huge monsters. Exhaling, Temptress said that this is really tiring. Taba Zengo replied that this was also his first time here, and he didn't expect that the inside of the tower would require them to keep climbing upstairs to scale the tower. He said that the number of monsters really matched the guild's dungeon. Temptress said that they're actually using a method that doesn't require them to kill the mobs to ascend the stairs. She was glad that she was really good at charm arts, otherwise they would have had to clean up after them instead of getting a free ride. Taba Zengo said that it was only the first floor, and they would probably still have to clean up after them. Temptress exclaimed that she doesn't want to do that, and will demand help from HQ right now. Taba Zengo said that they can't risk alarming them. He asked if she had forgotten their assignment. He said that if they send others in, there's a high chance that they'll alarm the other Penumbra members who are stationed outside, and then there would have been no point in them using her charm arts to sneak in here in the first place. He said that, without the Guildmaster's orders, now is not the time to get into a direct confrontation with Penumbra. Looking at the spiral stone staircase, Taba Zengo told her not to worry because, with how Heavenland's tower design usually is, the difficulty level of the monsters on each floor will surely increase as they go higher. He said that he doesn't believe that the seven of them can keep avoiding the monsters and rush to the top in one go. Temptress, agreeing, said that she would use Seduction Crow to keep following them. She said that, in the meantime, it can help them realize how they come past those monsters, and it will help them decide what to do. Taba Zengo said with a smile, let's get going too. Under Ling Si is leadership, with the strategy of avoid the monsters if possible, and attack if not, Shadow reached the top of the tower in no time at all. Of course, a danger they never expected was following right behind them. Seduction Crow flashed through the door behind Dark Feather, and he turned around. Narlo exhaled and said he was tired, and while it had gone fairly smoothly, he couldn't say it had been easy. Dark Feather looked at the door closing behind them. Coco Lai said that they're underleveled for this dungeon. After all, and, besides, they did have to give their full concentration in controlling their maneuvers and avoiding the mobs, so it does feel several times more taxing on their minds than it would if they were in a regular dungeon. Narlo turned around and asked Dark Feather what was wrong. Dark Feather answered, it's nothing. Stillwaters told Coco Lai that he had run out of mana potions and to ask her to give him hers. Coco Lai said she told him not to call her by her pet name. Ruko asked if there are only eight floors and if it's over. Lang Si replied that according to the official description, there should only be eight floors. Ruko scratched the back of his head and said that it was even easier than the first trial with the guards. The protagonist said that he felt like this trial was designed to help the team get used to each other and the goal was to improve the team's teamwork. He said that, after all, it'd be hard for most players to get their bearings if they had to face a sovereign rank boss like this immediately upon entering the tower. Ling Xi suggested that this is a considerate gesture on the developer's part. He said that the actual challenge lies behind this door. In front of them was a huge wooden door with a red pattern. Stillwaters said that it would be a level 85 sovereign rank boss. He asked Ling Xi about the confidence he had that they could make it. The protagonist told him not to worry because he didn't burn that midnight all for nothing. 
He said that with his strategy and their abilities they, Shadow, will bring the Mad King to his knees. Stillwaters and Coco Lai looked forward with a look of determination. Ling Si exclaimed that he never fights battles he can't win. The door slowly opened. Mad King, smiling with a mouth full of sharp teeth, asked, Have you come to kneel before me, or to disrupt my rest? He had large horns, and blue flames blazed above his head. The protagonist, apologizing, said that they had come to take his heart. 